Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, in today's video, I want to start by telling you a recent incident which happened to one of my friends. He's a very talented cybersecurity engineer and he was asked to present to the board about their cybersecurity posture. And this is his first time like presenting to the board, presenting to senior management. And he spent a lot of time, you know, he made some very awesome dashboards. He like showed like these are the CVEs, these are the current vulnerability assessment findings. Uh, these are the like major issues from the cybersecurity posture. What, what are the threat actors which are targeting their environment? And he worked quite hard and I saw it also, it was a very good presentation. And he presented it to the board, He this information. Uh, the only problem, you know what the problem was, right? Nobody understood the thing he was talking about. <laughs> Nobody understood it, right? They politely thanked them and no action was taken. After a while, the CISO, he took him aside and he said, look, your presentation was great. Nobody understood a thing that you said. He, di he didn't get criticized, but the CISO said, you really need to work on how you're presenting it. Otherwise, nobody is going to take action on all the good findings that you have uh, talked about. And I was talking to him and th this is where basically the idea for this video came about, about how to actually explain uh, cyber risk cyber risk findings to senior management who are mostly non-technical people, right? How do you explain it so that it actually action is taken. It's not just presenting for the sake of presenting, right? You, you want something to be done. You want cyber security to be taken seriously. So this is what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. If you're new to the channel, uh, my name is Tamur Jalal. I am a senior security consultant with Amazon Web Services here in the UK, in London. And I made this channel to give advice on cyber security careers, cloud security, AI. So if you're new to the channel, please do like and subscribe. And let's get started. So this is what I was talking about, how to explain cyber risk to non-technical people. And like I said, when I say when I say the words risk assessment or cyber risk, this is what the majority of people in cyber security sometimes they think about, right? They think about they, there is this matrix about low and medium and this very big uh, like Excel sheet, which has like 10,000 findings and which the auditor looks at every year when they get audited. And this is basically what cyber risk or risk assessment is, which is completely incorrect. We, I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about presenting cyber risk to people so that somebody takes action on this. And there are many, many, the, like the biggest mistake I see people making is they, they are not able to communicate these risks, especially to senior management, like I said. And these are your CEO, your CRO, your CFO, your COO. Usually they are not technical people. They care about the business. They care about operations. They rely upon you for cyber security. But if you want them to take action, you need to be able to explain these risks, right? You need to be able to communicate to them and tell them there's going to be a major issue if this does not have, if you, if you do not take this action. And if you're not able to communicate this, they will simply be confused and they will not take action. So uh, there are certain steps you can do to actually make sure that your findings are taken seriously and you're able to communicate it. The first step I want you to take is to translate the technical to the business. And this is where a major, major problem happens, right? Do not lead with the technology. You should lead with the impact. Your, your CEO, he does not care that you found three uh, critical findings in production, right? They, what does that mean? That's what he wants to know about. So what? Okay, you found it. So what? This is a question you should ask, right? The, your senior management, they care about downtime, what's the impact to revenue, what's, what are any regulatory fines, what is the damage to the brand that will happen. Unless you are able to communicate this, you will have a very difficult time in making them take you seriously. Okay. So again, instead of saying that, hey, we found a, like, a, like, hey, like I've said here, instead of saying there's like an unauthenticated remote code execution in a WAF that could allow an attacker to execute arbitrary code remotely. Okay, what does that mean? If I am a CEO, I have no idea what you're talking about, right? L look at the other way, which you communicate this, that there's a flaw in our internet facing system that could allow a hacker to shut down a customer portal, causing an outage and reputational damage during our peak season, right? Where the most revenue is being generated, where you will have the most negative publicity and headlines. This is something which will make them take it seriously. The first one, I have no idea. They, they will have no idea what you're trying to communicate. The second one, it's clearly communicating this is the issue and this is what it will lead to. And th th this can be like a, the world of difference. So every time you write or present a risk, right? I want you to like think about this. If exploited, this could lead to uh, dot, dot, dot. What can happen, right? So what? That is a question you should always ask. Okay, we, we have five critical findings. So what? What's going to happen? 
what could happen and this will force you to explain your risks in a proper and uh, methodical way okay uh, what else can we do we can another thing you can do is use real world examples now this is a simple this is human nature right unless you are able to relate this the risk to something which they are able to understand which they have seen in the industry they will they might not take the problem as seriously so use true documented scenarios that are actually similar to your industry and when people see that hey this has happened in our parallel industry with this company and this company is very similar to ours they will take they will take it much more seriously otherwise it seems very distant and it does not seem applicable to your industry unless you do it like this so like what's a example i can give you this is just an example but like in if you have an issue where the company is not taking patching seriously you can say hey that we had an issue like a com ecofax it was a major major like issue and all the headlines were about it right where over personal data of 147 million people were exposed and like it cost them around 700 million in fines and damages and because of simple missing patches or everybody knows about solar winds right the supply chain risk if you if you are a software vendor and you're providing software to people and maybe the supply chain is not being taken as seriously your software supply chain you can use the example of solar winds if you are trying to scare people all the time believe it won't work if you are able to relate it to an uh, to an incident in your industry then uh, your stakeholders will take you much more seriously so this is another way step 3 very very important and this is the mistake which my colleague made which my friend made which is stop reporting noise and what do i mean by that very common mistake you have like an hour with the board you want to tell them everything that you've done right otherwise you feel that they are not taking you seriously that they they'll think you're not doing anything but remember leadership's time is very very valuable right they want to know certain things they're not interested in like your dashboards as a similar it's and all that they want to know are we more secure today than before where are we more, most at risk and what decisions do you need that's the whole point of them right they are they have given you certain time they want to know what do you need from us like what's the issue what can we do and what decisions are needed so unless you can focus on these issues again you will be wasting the time you will waste the valuable time that you have with senior management so like i said instead of listing we have like 1842 alerts triaged okay wonderful so what the 31 vulnerabilities patched okay 14 compliance just passed yeah again i have no idea what you're talking about here instead you can say like this we have reduced the risk exposure in like three critical areas sorry i have just listened to but it should be three yeah but fishing success fishing success rate has dropped by 60% after targeted training we are still exposed to third party data leaks and we need a decision on vetting vendors you, you you follow me you need like you need more staff you need more technology you need an investment so now they know okay this is where we are and this is what this person is needing from us so this is a simple mental trick but it can communicate risk in a much more efficient way uh step number 4 use a simple risk template please the guys you don't need to download like very complicated risk templates from the internet simple word document i work in amazon and you might not know but amazon has a very simple way we focus on very very simple risk templates and we do not make like very very complicated documents you know so again use a clear structure don't download the very fancy risk templates and use the same format every time don't change your risk formats every time you're sending it something if you're using the same format your c level your executive they will start recognizing expecting it and they know okay this is the same risk format we use every time and this will build trust and it will help to speed up decisions so simple format you know just like this a risk summary uh, this is an example of a simple risk which i'm talking about a risk summary hey what's the issue like we have a high risk configuration in our cloud environment and it can potentially allow former employees to access sensitive cloud if the business impact this this is what can happen uh, what's the likelihood of this happening the current controls are weak but it exploitation would require targeted access right okay and what's the recommended action we need to have this automated iam life cycle management and audit policies what's the decision we need a tool license and we need one ft i don't think you need one ft but i'm just giving an example this is that's it like one pager you can send them they'll skim through it quickly either they'll approve it reject it but the key thing is they will understand it they will know what you are trying to communicate okay what else is there and last very very important all of these things will go away like they will be completely irrelevant if you're not able to do this which is practice please practice 
how you are delivering this if you are asked to present if you're not able to communicate it's like how you say it right a lot of times it happens to me also i speak very fast as you must have seen right if i get nervous i start speaking fast or i'm not able to like i get into technical things right without explaining what i'm talking about then your message will get lost how can you get better at this find a friend who is non technical and practice with him if after 1 minute you explain a technical thing to him without using any technical jargon ask them to explain to you what what did you understand from what i said if they are able to communicate to you the what the issue is then you know that you have communicated it properly right do not use technical words too much limit it to 1 to 2 and one thing which a lot of people forget sometimes use headlines not paragraphs when you're using slides right you know how headlines are there in the news they grab your attention very very fast right so like for example credential abuse is still a number one threat factor instead of saying findings from im review which is very boring you can make this headline and so people will look at it okay this is like still the issue right so you get attention grabbing headlines you can do it some people don't like this but i really like in a way of grabbing attention of what people are saying so this is what i was talking about these are five steps you can take to immediately improve how you are communicating cyber risk to non technical people remember very very important if you are just technically brilliant that's awesome it's not enough especially in this age where ai is very very rapidly evolving uh, we have to become like cyber risk translators where you able to translate risk and you need to be able to communicate risk in a way that business understands that you can drag get trust and drive action and get alignment right but good news is if you don't have this thing it's learnable right it's like going to the gym when you go there first time is very painful then slowly slowly you get better and you develop this muscle memory after a while you won't even recognize all these things that you're doing because it will become so second nature to you so apply the steps these five steps that i'm talking about and you will 100% see an improvement in how you communicate cyber risks so i hope this was useful to you please do like and subscribe to this channel thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video